Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Connor James. Today is Saturday, August 10th. Well, we have some news from overnight. A man was hit and killed by a car in Barberville. We now know his name, 39-year-old Corey Allen Ty of Corona, California. This is video sent to us from the scene. Police tell us Ty was walking in the southbound lanes of US 23 near Save-A-Lot when he was hit by a pickup. He was hit then by another car traveling in another lane. I was pronounced dead at the scene. No other injuries were reported and the incident is still under investigation. Well, a McGoffin County man is behind bars accused of trying to electrocute a woman. Police say 46 year old Merritt Salyer accused a woman of cheating before plugging in a hair dryer and throwing it in a bathtub while the woman was in it. Salyer is also accused of attacking the woman and damaging several items in the bathroom, including a hot water heater and ripping the door off its hinges. The victim was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. Salyer is charged with assault. And in Bell County, three people are facing charges after a drug investigation. Thursday, deputies were serving a warrant at a home for trafficking meth. They were, they were able to arrest two suspects, 31-year-old Jeffrey Inman and 33-year-old Julia Miller-Smith. While on the scene, a third suspect arrived at the home. They arrested 45-year-old Juliana Smith-Messer for an outstanding warrant. All three were taken to the Bell County Detention Center and faced several charges, including trafficking of a controlled substance. And 40 years later, a family in Breathitt County says they're still fighting for justice. Cara Jean, Cara Jean White, who murdered their grandparents and great uncle, was sentenced to death in 1980. His execution has not been carried out. Now, the Department of Public Advocacy is trying to remove White from death row and put him in prison without parole, claiming a mental disability. WYMT's Emily Bennett talked to family who said they're not going down without a fight. February 12, 1979, a day the family of Sam Cheney, Charles Gross, and Lula Gross will always remember. It seemed like there's always just that little black cloud over. There's that reminder that, you know, there's something missing. That was the day Mary Lou Harold's grandparents and great uncle were killed at their country store. Oh, she sent my dad and my brother up there to check on them, and they went in and found that they had been brutally murdered. James Strong was just eight years old when his great grandparents were murdered, but that day will always be burned into his mind. Believe it or not, I can still remember a lot about it because something that are as horrific as that was, it's hard to forget. I wish I could forget, but I can't. They still have piles of newspaper clippings telling the story of the day they want to forget. We were robbed of a lot of that because of him. The killer, Garou Jean White, was found guilty in 1980 and sentenced to death. Forty years later, White remains on death row. Now the Department of Public Advocacy is trying to have that sentence thrown out. They have been arguing for years that White is intellectually disabled, which by federal law means he cannot be executed. But the family says they're not buying that argument. We'll overturn his death sentence when he overturns my grandfather's death sentence. Looking to end a 40-year struggle. In Breathitt County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Now, yesterday, the family met with a lawyer from the attorney general's office. The family invited us to the meeting, but the attorney would not allow us in the room. The family will meet with the attorney again on August 19th. Now, since the reinstatement of the death penalty back in 1976, only three people have been executed by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. It has been more than 10 years since the state's last execution. That's because a Kentucky Supreme Court judge issued a stay on all executions. In fact, just last month, a second ruling declared the state's death penalty protocol unconstitutional because it does not adequately protect people with intellectual disabilities. Now let's check in with meteorologist Kelly McShane for a look at your forecast this morning. Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning, Connor. Happy Saturday, everybody watching. Now what we're looking at is a little bit of fog to start off our day. Overall, we see that patchy dense fog throughout most of the region. Up to the north, they're not getting in on too, too much fog this morning. However, we're seeing Prestonsburg, Pikeville, Logan. You are looking at zero miles of visibility. Also reduced visibility here in Perry County as well as Breathitt County, Harlan, and Middlesbrough, you're looking at about a mile or less of visibility as well. So be very careful on the roads this morning as that fog will continue throughout the next hour or so. Now those temperatures a little bit cooler to the north, 60s, lower 60s to the north, and then upper 60s to the south. And those temperatures going to continue to increase. And we're going to see the sunshine later on today. And I'll have that full forecast, Connor, here in just a little bit.
All right, thanks, Kelly. This weekend, a Lexington church will be will bring down school supplies for Harlan County students impacted by the Black Jewel bankruptcy case. About 60% of students were impacted. Heritage Baptist Church is stepping in to help. They will be at the Harlan County High School Sunday at around 1 to hand out supplies. And yesterday, we learned another Eastern Kentucky coal company plans to sell its mines. Cambrian Coal filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in late June. The Herald Leader reports the Pike County company plans to put its, ass plans to put its assets up for bid. Much like Black Jewel, if a judge approves the plan, the company will auction off its assets in September. The 11th would be the bid deadline. The auction would begin the 18th with sale hearings on the 24th. The company employs around 660 employees in eastern Kentucky and Virginia. Cambrian Coal CEO Jim Booth resigned less than two weeks before the company filed for bankruptcy. And two men in Floyd County are working together, bringing knowledge from the mining industry into a new platform. Slope Master LLC is now working to help ease the landscaping workload for public workers. Founders W.C. Porter and Mark Halbert spent years working in their prospective fields, creating and maintaining equipment for the coal mining industry. As the coal industry began changing, they say they had to diversify their plans so they could keep working. So they put their knowledge to the use, coming together to create a remote-controlled lawnmower that they say is game-changing for public work crews across the region. So we're taking out the manpower factor and adding a machine and, and, and a safe, safe environment. They have already, they already had a few people show interest in the product and are working to build newer models based on the prototype. The two hope to get a shop in place soon, complete with a crew of workers that would help provide the demand they hope to see from across the region. And a clothing giveaway in Knott County, Sportsplex is allowing families to fill their wardrobe needs. More than 100 families stopped by the giveaway yesterday. The Lee YMT's Madison Program has more. Clothes for those in need. It's really hard to get clothes right now with all the bills and everything. A growing need with school just around the corner. That 14th, my daughter starts back. And my little boy needed clothes, too. It's not only a need for Natasha Hurley, but for families across the region. Well, I realize that there's a lot of families that need these, these items before school starts. Something Elizabeth Combs, a volunteer, has experienced herself. You see kids that come to, clo to, to school and their clothes won't button around their waist because they've grown so much in you know, such a short amount of time that it's really hard. And personally knows all too well. I've got a lot of children myself, so I realize how hard it is to keep up whenever they're growing like crazy. One of her children, Katie Ritchie, came to help out. I thought I'd come help sort through it and let people get what they need. Along with a couple from New Mexico. Y'all are the sweetest people. You're so caring and giving, and it's a joy to be here. For Wendy Krause, there is a purpose to traveling so far. To help the people of Kentucky, to love the people of Kentucky, and that's not hard. Leaving an impact. They get excited about clothes. For them more than kids should, I guess. And brightening people's day in Knott County, Madison Program, WYMT Mountain News. Now, the giveaway is providing clothes for all ages and sizes. It will also take place today at the Sportsplex from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. or until clothes run out. Well, the Lincoln County Fairgrounds will host a benefit concert for the victims of the recent gas line explosion. Five homes were destroyed. Five more were damaged. Proceeds from the concert will go to the families. Steve Dixon says a group of others wanted to do something to help people, so they came up with the idea last week, and the support since has been incredible. A total variety. We have country, we have southern rock, blues rock, original acts, 80s cover bands, with the whole genre, the whole spectrum is being covered. The concert is set for Saturday, August 24th. Admission is $10 per person or 40 per car. And the Knox County Jail is almost completed, but the opening is slightly delayed. Knox County Judge Executive Mike Mitchell says the jail is waiting a few parts for an air dampener system before they can get clearance to open the jails. Jail officials say they're anxious to get into the new Knox County Detention Center as the current jail is only suited for 35 inmates. Officials say they are having to use other jails to house county inmates and the new jail will alleviate that problem. There's lots of times when we have uh, one, one Monday we had 140 something here and we called six different jails and everybody was filled up and so nobody could help us by taking any inmates. 
Crews expect the jail to be completed by the end of September. Well, coming up on Mountain News this morning, there were more than just cars on the road yesterday in one Harlan County community. And later in sports, we take a look at a pair of pigskin previews here from the Hazard Bulldogs and the Jackson County Generals coming up. This weekend will be a hot and sunny one, but it does look good for outdoor plans. I'll have the full forecast coming up next.